Hello again, I'm Joe Barry and I work for Visuality Systems. In this video, we will discuss DFS and show how SMB interacts with it. We'll start with a brief introduction to DFS and follow it up by presenting Wireshark output showing the SMB commands that Windows executes in order to support DFS navigation. So what is DFS? The abbreviation stands for the Distributed File System. This is essentially a distributed hierarchical file system organized in a tree structure with folders at node points where the individual folders themselves may well reside on different computers. DFS can work on a single server, in which case the server is essentially offering a number of shares on that computer to the client. Alternatively, DFS can also be used in a domain-based environment where several servers in the domain act as DFS servers in parallel and clients automatically select one of the DFS servers and send queries to that server. So here we see our client sitting at his desk in Los Angeles, let's say, and he's accessing his local server. On that server are two folders. If he accesses this particular folder, since it is a DFS folder, he will either end up going to the folder here in New York or to a folder on this computer here in London. These two servers are being kept in sync via replication software. So this allows him to access either folder and see the same identical information. If one of the servers crashes, the client will be able to continue working on the second server without any issues. Now let's say he wants to access the DFS folder that is down here. This one actually has three different referrals associated with it. If he ended up going to one of these two referrals, then he will end up accessing one of these two shares on this particular server in New York. Alternatively, he might end up over here on this folder in London. Now, is he actually here? No, because this also is a DFS folder, and this folder has referrals that forward him either to another share on that same computer or to a share on a computer in Berlin. So now let's go back to our client and the original two folders that are on his local server. What would he see when he does a right click on the folder and chooses properties view? So let's assume we have our local folder which is called DFS root, which is a subfolder of DFS are on our local server. We right click on the folder and choose properties. This is the properties dialog that will pop up. Note that for a DFS folder, there is a new tab here called DFS. We see here the name of our local folder and we see here on the referral list, the name of the folder that we will point to. This is the computer name as we see over here and this is the share or the folder on the remote computer. So if I access this folder, I am really going to be over here. Now we are, of course, not limited to going to one particular folder, but my referral list can be quite large as we see in the following uh, slide. Here we have our local folder list of referrals. It is a subfolder of DFS, which sits on our local server. If we right click on this folder and request properties, we'll get a properties dialog that looks like this. The name of our local folder is referenced over here. We have a new tab called DFS, which when we click on it, will give us the referral list. This is the list of all the possibilities that when we click and access whatever that we want to access on this folder, we actually end up at one of these locations. If we look at the list of possibilities here, these were of course defined by our DFS administrator. We'll see, for example, here are three references to the same computer, but although we're not displaying the entire name here, each of these refers to a different endpoint or share folder on that particular computer. You'll note the column 
here active when when an item is uh, set to yes and if for example we're replicating this with another computer then this will become the active primary computer that we write to however the default return of referrals which machine that we're going to will be by ordered as they appear here at the same time however note that a dfs administrator has control and can override the default referral ordering there are a number of different options that can be used for returning a referral to be used by the reference that the user is making to the local folder so now let's turn our attention to smb itself and see what it is that SMB executes in order to retrieve this information and allow us to move and look at the various contents of these different folders. So here we see, if we go to packet 801, we see that we um, submit a, re a create request for our local folder. The response from the server is a path not covered status. This means that the request was for a folder that is a DFS folder. At that point, if we want to continue, we must issue an IOCTL request called DFS get referrals for our same folder. The DFS referrals request will return in the response a list of the various referrals that are associated with this particular folder. Let's look at the response that we got from the DFS get referrals and see the details of that response. Let's look at the lower left window here where we see the detailed information. There's an area here called the out data, which represents the results of the IOCTL call. We then have, let's skip this field for a moment, the number of referrals, which are 14. We see the referrals are listed under the referrals item. Referral 1, referral 2, 3, and we can scroll down and, and look at the other 11 items that are there. The field up here, path consumed, represents the number of bytes, which is actually two times the number of characters that are consumed. In other words, think of this as 33 characters. This means that the original field that we were trying to connect to, we need to look at a, the entire field to identify the referral that we want. It could be that we wanted a folder that is underneath list of referrals, yet the actual referral is only up to here, in which case the number of characters here would be more than 33, and yet this would still be 33 characters consumed by the referral. The node item is very important in that this is the direction of where our endpoint really is located. Here is the name of the server, and here is the share that we are going to. And when we actually pick this referral as we did, then you'll notice that this referral takes us to here. Note that we did a negotiate to that server. This is the server that we ended up at. The negotiate protocol was executed, followed by the setup, which is our authentication, and then our tree connect to that specific referral, which is, of course, the connection to the specific share. So now that you have seen how SMB negotiates the various pathways as defined by the DFS structure, I hope you have enjoyed the video, and again, thank you for watching.